Following Keith Hart's lecture in the classroom, we take a look at preparing your vehicle to go off-road. On this 90, the number plate extends below the bumper and is prone to damage. It's better to raise it now than need to replace it later. Door mirrors should be folded back to prevent them hitting trees and other obstacles. Windows should preferably be closed, although a small aperture is okay to prevent condensation buildup. Remember, though, that bushes and branches can be very painful if they catch your face. The CB aerial is easily bent, so it's probably best to remove it. Looking at the back of the vehicle, David approves of the high-mounted towing hitch. The problem with low-mounted versions is that they tend to scrape the ground and can also significantly reduce the vehicle's departure angle. After folding in the driver's door mirror, David lowers the radio aerial to prevent it from being bent. Walking across to a V8 Range Rover, David now waterproofs the underbonnet electrics. After removing the distributor cap, silicon grease is applied to the rebate which mates with the distributor body by using a plastic syringe. No more than a 1mm bead should be applied as this could squeeze out and get picked up by the rotor arm. Notice how David smooths out the bead of grease to ensure good coverage. After firmly securing the cap, a thorough application of aerosol grease should be sprayed over the cap itself and the high tension leads. To finish off, the top of the coil gets the same treatment. Here we're being shown the square-headed wading plug and the hexagonal plug which are to be fitted to this TDI discovery. The threaded plug with the hexagonal head is fitted into the drain hole at the bottom of the timing case cover. All four-cylinder petrol and diesel Land Rover engines including the TDI which have a timing belt have a drain hole here. The plug ensures that water does not enter the timing cover when crossing deep water. Now the other wading plug is being screwed into the drain hole in the bell housing for the same reason. All Land Rover products, whether four or eight cylinder models, have a drain hole here. Always remember to remove the plug or plugs, as the case may be, after crossing deep water so that any water that's entered the housings can drain out. While underneath, make sure everything looks in order, including the remote axle breathers fitted to all coil-sprung Land Rovers, Discoveries and Range Rovers. Any rear or side steps fitted should be folded up to save them from damage. If your leaf-sprung Land Rover has freewheeling hubs, make sure you adjust both sides to the 4x4 position. After off-roading, return them back to the 4x2 for on-road driving to save wear and tear on the front drive components. With one or two exceptions, all leaf-sprung vehicles have a selectable part-time four-wheel drive system. When driving on-road, these Land Rovers are driven in two-wheel drive only with power to the rear axle. Engage four-wheel drive low ratio by pulling back the transfer lever with the red knob through neutral into low. To engage four-wheel drive in high ratio, simply depress the lever with the yellow knob. To disengage high 4x4, pull the transfer lever back until the yellow knob pops back up, then return the lever. The short black lever on this vehicle is for the Super Winch Ferry Overdrive Unit, which should only be normally used in third and fourth high ratio. Here, Keith Hart uses a client's discovery to demonstrate the need to engage the centre differential lock to ensure that drive goes equally to both the front and rear axles. Now, very slowly, you connect the front, the top shaft, and the back shaft. Now, very slowly, try and do the same thing, and you'll be able to drive straight over the traffic. There we are, you've got all that extra. Right, Tony, to uh, engage low ratio, we simply put our hand on the transfer lever, move it from the high ratio through ne neutral mm -hmm. into low. If it does not go easily, right. simply put your foot on the foot brake, hand on the handbrake and take it off, 
engage as your foot's on the clutch, first gear. Mm -hmm. As you play on the clutch, lead lift the clutch up, as mm -hmm. you play on the clutch, push and feel it into low ratio. Right. Good. Then to engage differential lock, move the lever over to the left mm -hmm. and see the light come up on the dash. Yep. There Stop you that. are. Then we're ready for the off. Range Rovers, built prior to 1988, like the Discovery and 9110, have a permanent full-time four-wheel drive system. This incorporates a centre differential to ensure that wind-up between the axles cannot occur when the vehicle is being driven on road. Range Rovers manufactured since this date, like this one here, incorporate a viscous coupling which automatically locks up when one prop shaft revolves at a different speed to its counterpart. Before venturing off-road, it's important to carry out a full check of all fluids to ensure that they're at least close to their maximum levels. Insufficient engine oil, for example, can easily lead to oil starvation if the vehicle spends time on a steep slope. Suitably prepared, we make our way out onto the course. Having selected low ratio, remember to engage the centre locking differential if fitted. The diff lock may be engaged or disengaged at any speed and in any gear without the use of the clutch, providing that no wheels are spinning and you're not turning a corner at the time. It's very important to keep your thumbs out of the steering wheel which can unexpectedly kick when driving off-road and easily cause injury. Make sure all loose items are stowed away. Any odd items like cassette tapes or soft drink cans falling can not only be distracting but can cause a problem if they become trapped under a pedal. Seat belts are advisable too and indeed are a legal requirement on public rights of way. Only reduce the tyre pressures for crossing very soft ground where you need a larger footprint. When driving off-road, remember the saying, drive as slowly as possible and as fast as necessary. Driving like this will ensure that you have built in reliability and safety at all times. Whenever driving off-road, especially when muddy, always use the highest gear possible, usually second or third, in low ratio with the centre diff lock engaged to minimise wheel spin. Use first gear for driving through difficult areas like rocky sections, where control over speed is vitally important, and first gear should also be used for descending. If your vehicle is an automatic, use similar gears or, alternatively, Leave the vehicle in drive for all situations apart from descending where first gear should always be used. Here we see the 90 driving up a mild undulating track using second gear with lots of control. Now we see what happens as David drives recklessly for the camera. Driving like this can easily cause loss of control as is demonstrated here. It's a very good idea to straddle ruts if they look too deep. It's very important that the vulnerable axle differentials don't strike the high ground between the ruts. A dented front diff casing could quickly be worn away by the revolving crown wheel, which will not only let oil out, but water in. Now David demonstrates what happens if you attempt to drive through deep ruts. Look how close the diffs are to the ground here. Okay, 
Don't try and fight the ruts by accidentally steering out of them. Know at all times where your front wheels are facing, as you could be in for a shock as the ruts become shallower. If you do end up in a situation where two wheels on an axle fall back into the ruts, keep going, for he or she who hesitates will probably become stuck. To summarise, wherever possible and practical, it's best to straddle the ruts. Remember to always be in the right gear at the right time, driving on the throttle to give you plenty of control. Be sure never to ride the clutch, as doing so will either cause excessive wear, or you could accidentally press down on the pedal in a panic situation. Never be in too much of a hurry when driving off-road, as doing so could cause you to either brake or damage the vehicle. Driving slowly, like this, will ensure that your vehicle will come to no harm with a minimum of repairs and maintenance. When driving across rocky areas, be sure to drive as slowly as possible, being careful not to let a tyre strike a rock, and be especially careful not to straddle any large rocks that could hit the axle diffs, which are the lowest point of the vehicle. When crossing a badly potholed area like this, don't have more than one wheel in a hole at any one time, or you could become cross-axled and go nowhere. As the 90 is driven across these humps, it is only momentum and the vehicle's incredible axle articulation that keep the vehicle moving as wheels lift off the ground. A better way to drive is to keep the wheels on each axle as level as possible, which gives more control and stability. Here, David is using second gear, controlling the speed by the throttle, 
accelerating when climbing and backing off when descending. Through this muddy, rutted section, he's using second gear again, keeping out of the ruts with sufficient momentum to keep going. Whenever driving off-road like this, always drive sensibly and carefully, keeping full control of the situation. Start driving like this, and sooner or later you could come to grief as the vehicle leaps out of the ruts and you lose control. Always think twice about driving across soft ground, especially marshy, boggy or sandy areas. Getting stuck in these areas can involve a lot of effort to get out and you can waste a lot of time. It's so important to read the ground ahead and, if in doubt, get out of the vehicle and walk the chosen route. Establish where the softer areas are and mark the route you intend to drive to keep out of trouble. Soft ground is one area where it should be useful to reduce tyre pressures to give a greater footprint. Always drive in the highest gear possible using low ratio and centre diff lock if fitted. Rev the engine as little as possible so as not to break through the surface and stay in the same gear to avoid using the clutch and losing momentum. David's advice is don't try the impossible as you're sure to become well and truly stuck and require recovery. Climbing a hill or steep bank, always check that your exit is clear. Once you're sure it's safe, pick the right gear, often low ratio second or third, and gather momentum before reaching the bottom of the slope. Up to now we've been practicing driving as slowly as possible. Well, now it's time to drive as fast as necessary to take us safely to the top. Always pick a straight and square line up the hill or bank, taking the shortest and easiest route. When you reach the top, be sure to back off the throttle to avoid unnecessary wheel spin. Try to make sure that the front wheels don't lift off the ground at any time, especially as you go over the top, as when spinning front wheels land, front half shafts are easily broken. When climbing, watch out for undulations in the ground which could easily throw your vehicle about, causing loss of control and possibly a sideways slide off the hill. One of the problems encountered when driving up a steep hill is that the steering becomes very light as all the weight is transferred to the back axle. 
Even the smallest undulation in the ground can throw you off your chosen route. Always try and use a defined route such as a track rather than a grassy climb because if you don't make it to the top at least you'll have tram lines to come back down in. Experience will tell you the right approach speed and gear to get you up and over the top. Here, David demonstrates using second gear and not enough momentum. This time, he picks third gear for the wet ground conditions and a higher approach speed, which ensure that he gets up and over the top. Here, David is showing us what happens when you forget to engage the centre diff lock. See, the wheels, especially the front wheels, which become light on climbing, spin aimlessly, not getting him anywhere. Mm -hmm. This time, he engages the centre diff lock with second gear, and up he goes, but with rather a lot of wheel spin. Bottom, this time engaging third gear and with hardly a hint of wheel spin it's up and over the top. Now David attempts a step descent. Notice the ease with which he climbs it by using the correct approach speed and the right gear. The failed hill climb is probably the most important skill that the off-roader should learn. In dry conditions, should you have picked too high a gear, as the engine stalls, depress the foot brake pedal immediately to hold you on the hill while still in gear. Only then, depress the clutch pedal, move the gear lever into reverse, and take your foot right off the clutch. Reach for the ignition key and flick the starter at the same time as taking your foot off the foot brake. The weight of the vehicle will ensure the engine fires easily, allowing you to come back down under full engine braking. In wet conditions, it is unlikely that you'll stall the engine, as the wheels could be spinning furiously. When you realise that you're going no further, depress the clutch and foot brake simultaneously. The foot braking stops the spinning wheels. Select reverse gear and take both feet off the pedals together, again allowing you to come back down in complete control under engine braking. If you start tobogganing backwards, speed the engine up a little to regain traction. When descending, always use low ratio first gear with centre diff lock engaged to give you maximum engine braking. Make sure you use the straightest route down and if you start to toboggan, remember to raise the revs a little. If you can't see your exit, then get out of the vehicle, look down and make sure your wheels are pointing straight ahead. As you move over the top, make sure you keep your feet well clear of the clutch and foot brake.
always steer straight down the hill, since accidentally steering to one side or the other may cause the vehicle to lurch out of the track with alarming and potentially damaging results. Remember too, the slower you go over the top of a hill, the slower you will descend. This time, David ensures that he steers straight ahead using first gear with engine braking. Always use a track to the bottom of the hill, rather than a slippery grassy surface. Look what happens as tobogganing occurs. The lighter back wheels lose traction and the vehicle slides over the surface. Control is regained by lightly accelerating and driving to the bottom. <laughs> 